Remember a couple of years ago when hip hop like semi accepted Tyler, the creator for being gay. I felt like we as a culture didn't really deal with the fact that the rapper with one of the most homophobic lyrics in the past decade was actually gay himself. Taking it back, I remember when Odd Future first came on the scene. They took college campuses by storm, well, at least the artsy fartsy one I went to. And at first, I wanted to go along with it, but I, I just couldn't. And I feel like a big reason was my experience listening to Eminem and feeling a bit guilty about enjoying his music when I was younger and not realizing that I had been sidestepping any of his critics who had been getting on him about his flippant homophobia. So you can understand why I wasn't exactly rushing to listen to Goblin, an album that was infamous for using the other F word 213 times. Maybe if I hadn't had so much time to think about Eminem's homophobic lyrics and their impact, I would have been more willing to listen to him, but by that point I had really started to pay attention to the fact that I hadn't previously considered how those type of lyrics might make other gay teens feel. On top of that, I never considered how these type of lyrics tend to normalize homophobia around teens who are already around other homophobic people. And another thing I didn't realize, that gay kid and that homophobic kid, they're sometimes the same person. Enter Tyler the Creator. His was the type of F word flinging in an age where, honestly, it felt like we were beyond at this point. And I don't mean we were better than that, God knows people are still homophobic and whatnot, but I mean by 2009, you could not be a super homophobic rapper in your lyrics all the time and have hit records. And I don't mean, oh, I don't vibe with queers type of lines. No, Eminem didn't just say, I don't vibe with queers. He said stuff like, Whether you're a fag or less, or the homosex, a math or a trans or vest, pants or dress, hey fags, the answer's yes. He did that and still managed to have hit records like it didn't even matter. And let's not get it twisted, the fact that you can't do that anymore is good, it means things are definitely changing, if slowly. But for me, by the time I saw Odd Future specifically making a name for themselves off of the shock rap, which by nature is about crossing people's psychological boundaries and taboos, I kinda tuned out, cause as I got older, offending people for the sake of offending them just felt empty to me. So I just didn't bother to listen, figuring all they were was the newest rap group dissing the same old targets, gay people and women. But then I heard that a member of the crew was a lesbian, and it, well, that kind of threw me off. And then Frank Ocean came out as bisexual, and well, shit. These two revelations made people start asking Tyler some questions. Like, why were you okay with saying homophobic shit knowing that you had a couple of close LGBT friends? How is this acceptable to them? But then Tyler came out as gay himself. and. I feel like the culture didn't really come to grips with that. And I don't mean just we didn't accept him as gay, I mean we didn't really reckon with the fact that all that blatant, unabashed, derogatory, and cruel lyricism at the expense of gay people was actually a roundabout expression of self-hate. Like, dude didn't turn gay last year, he, he was gay all throughout those horrible demeaning lyrics. So when he came out, the conversation was, does the gay community accept Tyler? But Quite frankly, on an individual basis, I, I completely understand if a queer person still isn't cool with the music of a man who's always sounded so flippantly unconcerned about their issues in his music. My concern is that the loudest guy in the room of hip-hop's modern homophobia turned out to be the gayest guy in the room of hip-hop's modern homophobia. And I'm not dissing him for being a hypocrite here, I mean we all know that the super homophobic preacher who turns out to be gay is a trope for a reason, because it happens in real life. I mean this isn't a bug, it's a feature of any society that made it normal for decades to shame and insult people for loving someone of the same sex. Now, forgive me if I haven't seen an article really breaking down the reality of this revelation, and if you've seen this big outpouring of love for Tyler the Creator in the hip-hop community somewhere that I haven't seen, well, let me know, but, but, well, I feel like I didn't need to be in the trans community or give a shit about the Kardashians to know who Caitlyn Jenner was. I know who Tyler is, and I read hip-hop editorials all the time, and the fact that a homophobic rapper turned out to be gay, that, that barely hit the radar on a lot of, uh, hip-hop sites. Like, some sites, I remember talking about it, but not nearly enough. It just felt like like it was one of the things you could talk about that's a bit scandalous and what was happening, you know what I'm saying? Funny thing is, Tyler's even said on Twitter that he tried to come out many times, but either no one believed him or they just weren't paying attention. And when he did come out, you know, in such an obvious way, I, what even happened? There was no big sweeping acceptance moment like when Elliot Page came out, and hell, there was even some support for Frank Ocean, after it was clear that he could make hate records for people, of course. Uh, however, uh, there was no huge wave of support for Tyler, there was just... An awkward situation that everyone just sort of poked their sticks at before moving on. Funny thing is, I, it's certainly partially his own fault. I mean, Tyler's so well known as being a troll and a joker that being serious didn't really make sense. In fact, one example many point to is his interview here. How are uh, Norwegian girls? Yeah, they all got this look. Yeah, but I'm in a dude, so. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah, I don't even. Yeah. Black dudes only? You I don't do even me. like black dudes at all. I'm in the white guys. I'm also sexually attracted to vans. To vans? No, no, like cars. What are we doing? Oh, shit. I'm crazy. He admits to liking boys, in particular white boys, which is his own kind of worms we don't have time to get into here, but then he immediately says that he's also sexually attracted to literal vans with the same lackadaisical delivery obscuring the ability to take either claim seriously. 
But who's to say that that mask, that trolling persona, is put up so that he could tell us his truth without feeling like it would hurt? Because let's take a step back and understand that society at large, and hip-hop in general, has been breathtakingly homophobic since time immemorial. So when someone is gay in a space where you could be beaten up not only for being gay, but coming off as gay, what does that do to someone? Shit, I'm sure we were all bullied at one point or another, but I'm pretty sure it's one thing to be picked on for acting gay when you're not, and another to be picked on for acting gay when you are. And in this confrontational interaction, you're basically being called out and ridiculed for having your identity. And just to speak directly to the hip-hop community, there doesn't seem to be any real celebration when a gay rapper comes out. There's just this tacit sense of, okay, fine, you're gay, just shut up about it and we'll be cool. Same with Young M.A., same with Dej Lowe, same with I Love Making, and whose homosexuality only even became a hot topic after Migos said something about it. And this sucks, you know? Like, the state of this. I hate that in this modern age we see artists come out in other forms of art and they get this overwhelming acceptance of love, but for hip-hop we just do this collective nod and go like, ah, alright, yeah, whatever. And, I mean, I guess that may seem progressive to some, I mean, you know, because, I mean, shouldn't we eventually reach a point where we're coming out as gay, doesn't matter, and is treated as kind of blasé, but to me, something certainly feels off. By which I mean, uh, where was Tyler during all of Pride Month? Where's Dej Loaf? Where are all these artists being open and celebrating their love, and more importantly, their courage to come out in a world that, as much as we like to think is super progressive, fucking isn't? And let's be absolutely clear about this. The Supreme Court just ruled less than a decade ago that same-sex marriage is legal in all 50 states. But I ask you honestly, do you think everyone accepts gay people now that hip-hop specifically is in the best place it could be in accepting queer artists? Well, for a quick example, let's take a look at the track listing for Lil Nas X's album, the, the biggest young artist to come out as queer. All the female artists of the day seem to be present and accounted for, Doja Cat, Megan, Cardi B, but the black male rappers are mysteriously absent. The one guy he's on the track with is Jack Harlow, a white rapper who could also be considered an outsider to the genre for some. I guarantee this isn't wild coincidence. I say all that to say, the next time a rapper comes out, maybe let's actively notice how we might be excluding people from musical spaces because of how queer aesthetics preemptively signifies exclusion from them. Let's have a discussion about not just tolerance, but acceptance, not just superficial signifying, but true representation. And most importantly, let's really look at the factors that cause our society to turn a guy like Tyler the Creator into a gay man who makes homophobic music, or as Tyler might say, a fucking walking paradox. But what do you think of the situation? Is there something I might have missed? Some factor I didn't notice? Honestly, I'd like to keep dialogue on this sort of stuff going because I think it's important to the growth of the genre and whatnot. So if you want to, leave a comment. And if you want to support, go to patreon.com slash rap critic to get access to all the content like this first or ko-fi.com slash rap critic to request stuff for me to review. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.